Lukewarm Christians give God their leftovers, not their first and best. Stop calling your complacency and apathy a busy schedule or bills or forgetfulness. Hmm. Call it what it is, evil. Malachi 1.8. That's so stupid. We know Zach's opinion. <laughs> what does Malachi Zach 1.8 say? is a say? yes for number eight, lukewarm <laughs> Christian. <laughs> And I think number seven, six, five, four, and three, also yeses. Whatever you do in word and deed, do all for the glory of God. Like the, the way that's worded is like, oh, shoot, again, it's another checklist. Like, oh, because I'm busy with my work to provide for my family, therefore, I'm not actually on the front lines fighting for Jesus. Is that the spirit of what's meant by that verse? It's that's not, what it sounds like? It's and not maybe, really whatever you do. Well, you're, oh, the verse I'm talking about? Yeah, that's... Uh, how maybe uh why don't you why are you saying that <laughs> why 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 did you quote that verse because whatever you're doing in life you can when you're doing something well so I, th- maybe this is my interpretation yeah uh and you guys come at me with come at me if you have a different uh take it's like you have to you're working because you need to pay the bills yeah. you can do that to the best of your ability yeah with honor and integrity, and I think that glorifies God according to their language. I don't. I don't go around life sure. thinking in those terms, but it's just like do things without compromise. Being a good father, yeah. raising your kids well, yeah. the busyness of life. Everybody's busy in America. You can do those things and be glorifying God. The way they are wording it is like there's some like hierarchy that we're missing because like oh no, I'm busy today. Sorry, I can't help you move. I'm busy today. Sorry, I forgot to come by the hospital. I, I'm. You're being charitable. I'm on, I'm on this this, You're being this chair. I'm on what the Christian the, what, what was the Christian ver- couch. What was the verse they uh, quoted? Malachi one eight. Malachi. It's my favorite Italian. Malachi. It's a Malachi. <laughs> I wanna eat. I wanna eat the pasta. Did you, get, did you get it pulled up? Com- complain. It, it is an argument against compla- complacency and apathy. What you described um, is not being a complacent or apathetic person working hard for your family, trying to do well. That's not complacency and apathy. I, I think this is a flavor of one of the earlier points, which is basically like, hey, that's pretty cool. Someone else will do it, right? Someone else is doing the good work, and I felt pumped up about it. Hmm. Would you like me to read the verse? One yeah, eight. Definitely. Malachi one eight. When you offer blind animals for sacrifice, is that not wrong? When you sacrifice lame or diseased animals, is that not wrong? Try offering them to your governor. Would he be pleased with you? Would he accept you? Said the Lord Almighty. So basically, are you offering shitty sacrifices to the Lord? <laughs> then GTFO. Are you? All the time. Well. <laughs> and that's why I'm triggered. Uh, <laughs> GTFO. <laughs> and that's why you will find me in Laodicea. <laughs> wow. Sucking on some dirty old pond water. Dirty pine water. At this point, this beer is lukewarm, which is better than hot beer. Boiling beer. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely better. So it's definitely, yeah, don't don't offer bad sacrifices, but really, like, how do you apply that verse as a one-to-one to our current context? Well, why did he... Read the thing again. And lukewarm he just, Christians uh-huh. give God their leftovers. Okay. Not their first and best. Okay. Stop calling your complacency and apathy a busy schedule or bills or forgetfulness. Call it what it is, evil. This goat is looking at me cross-eyed, and this goat has beautiful eyes. I'm going to give that one to God. I'm going to sacrifice the one that's cross-eyed and blind. Give that one to God so I can keep the goat that makes good eye contact with me. Everybody knows that. That just goes without saying. <laughs> but I mean, when it says, would you sacrifice a blind? So it is like, would it's you? A sh- it's a shitty sacrifice is what they're implying. Yeah. Right. They're saying like, you you found something. You're like, I can make and more money with this goat. I think so I'm going to hang on to this one. I'll just give you the crappy one. I think what's kind of juicy is later on in Malachi, God says he's going to take the shit of their sacrifices God, and put it on them. this is why you're here. And put it on them. On them. Spread it over them because they're that bad. So God doesn't want that. Nope, doesn't want it. It's that bad. I'm going to take them and just smear it, rub it around. Oh, like physically? Well, smush it. The on imagery it. is pretty. <laughs> it's pretty clear. I'm glad yeah. you said that. It's really yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah. So track. translate this to us. We don't have goats, do we? 
I don't have but, any goats. But the my way wife that, would love to have some goats, by the way. The way she, I could, if she I could thinks get mini goats and mini pigs exist. She thinks those are real things. They're just babies that they they're kill. Just bo- they babies. They kill get, them before they they sacrifice them to God before they grow up. They get big. I kept trying to tell her she's like, let's get a mini pig. I'm like, no, no, that's not a mini pig. It's <laughs> just a baby. It will be 400 plus pounds. I'm with her in that they are adorable. And a baby goat crawling on you is the best thing ever. Yeah. But they grow up and then they set, they they worship the devil. That's what goats do. <laughs> when when the pig gets too big, do you eat it? That oh. could be the deal with you and Lindsay. Just like, it's we're cool having it, but when it gets to X amount of pounds, we're taking it to the butcher. We're having the luau. It's going to be great. And then we can start over again. So don't name the pig, babe, or anything like that. Just we can work this plan. It's a compromise. I'm going to make sure Lindsay doesn't listen to this podcast <laughs> because there's no way in hell that's happening. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Those are uh, they're poop machines. Yeah. Uh, it, it's just this is the type of language. I'm not putting this on Francis, um, but it's the kind of language that church organizations use to control people. If I'm not a generous person, if I don't give of my time, if I don't do things for others, usually it's if giving, I don't give giving of, to the church. If, if I don't give of my time, do you, pick the most charitable definition of this. If I just take I care, don't of, want to. if I just take care of me, <laughs> mm-hmm. and I give all these excuses, does that? Am I an, am I the hot slash super cool wonderful Christian, or am I in lukewarm territory? Yeah, I I'm not going to answer that question. <laughs> I think that the difficulty of this, there's there's a bit of truth in it. Sure. And because as I'm hearing you say it probably for the fifth time, because I don't have the sheet of paper in front of me. Sorry. No, that's okay. And and someone is so self-involved and so, again, it assumes that their busyness isn't doing good things. Because you can be really busy doing meaningful things. We, we know people in our lives yeah. that, that are doing that and that are meaningful for other people and that could fit the definition of sacrifice. I don't and think that's what they're arguing against. I don't think that is yeah. either. So it's, again, that busyness that is more, you know, self-absorbed, navel-gazing. Yeah. Just, I want to I want to binge Netflix type of busyness. Sure. I'm busy. I'm, I'm shampooing my hair. But that, and I think the the trap of it is more along the lines of that person is missing out on what emerges when they engage in a meaningful way in community. Yeah. Where they allow themselves to be known and they give sacrificially of, let's say, it's a skill they have or... Their time, their treasure, and their talent? Yeah, right. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I thought I put it into airplane mode. (laughs) That is so good. That's your phone, Andy, right? You're getting a call from Loverboy? (laughs) (laughs) You know, if you... Malachi is not a long book. This isn't the uh, smear you on it that you mentioned, Colin, but but God, according to Malachi, goes on to say, so I will come to put you on trial. I will be, qu- be quick to testify against sorcerers, adulterers, perjurers. So far, most Christians are like, yeah. Not me. Put them on trial. Get those guys and I, girls. But then he goes on in the same group against those who defraud laborers of their wages, who oppress the widows, and the fatherless deprive the foreigners among you of justice, but do not fear me. Just uh, you know, food for thought. Anyways, we got one more. Okay, one I, more. Here we go. Let me borrow this. By the way, I don't think that either one of you checked that box of uh, not giving. The beauty of this list is that I think hopefully everyone is listening and being like, oh yeah, I technically, it's worth thinking about. Like, yes, I, I'm not. At times, I, don't I may be. All. Oh. And, and you vastly in and out. I found it. Do you want me to read yeah, it? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. What'd you find? And now you priests... This oh, turn wo- that mic a little bit more towards you. This like bend morning. It, bend it down a little bit. There, yeah. So I'm the new guy. Sorry. And now you priests, this warning is for you. If you do not listen, and if you do not resolve to honor my name, says the Lord Almighty, I will send a curse on you, and I will curse your blessings. Yes, I have already cursed them because you have not resolved to honor me. Because of you, I will rebuke your descendants. I will smear on your faces the dung from your festival sacrifices, and you will be carried off with it. That's rad. On your face. So God uh, God sees the crap that you just gave him, and he's going to smear it in your face. To the priests. To the priests, uh, no less. To the priests. And that's often the way this goes, is the, peop- the insiders... The, re- the religious elite, the people that belong, are the ones that receive the hardest rebukes. The face smearing. Even in the New Testament, it's always the the t- tables were turned not at the people who were sinners. It was the people who thought they weren't. Anyways, keep going. 
I think the most damning version of number eight, which I just read, mm-hmm. is uh, the person who comes to church and functions with the idea that someone else will take care of this, that I'm not needed to contribute to what this community needs to function. Yeah. Someone else will do this. That's that's how I read that one, and I go, did you miss the point? 